We're attracting a consumer that formerly wasn't as engaged in the category of beauty. She's coming in through Birchbox, maybe even coming in skeptical. And as a result of Birchbox, she's spending more in beauty. So ultimately, Birchbox is growing the pie for the industry. Birchbox, founded by Katia Beecham five years ago, is taking the beauty industry by storm, asking its one million plus subscribers to pay $10 a month for a box of product samples. And industry giants are taking notice. Sephora just announced plans to launch a similar subscription service, recognizing the growing popularity of Try Before You Buy. How does it feel to have a brand like that validate what you're doing? I mean, you said it, I think it's really validating. We've been doing this for five years and it's a testament to the fact that the whole commerce landscape is changing, e-commerce is changing, and it's very clear that there's going to continue to be evolutions in how the consumer wants to shop. But Birchbox doesn't just want to be known for product samples. It wants to upsell consumers, hoping they'll purchase the full-sized item from Birchbox instead of other beauty stores like Sephora and even Amazon. You know, it really does start with the process of subscribing and discovery, but our whole purpose is to get you to find the things you love and buy them, and buy them from us. And that seems to be happening. After subscribing to Birchbox's sample service, consumers spend 38% more on the Birchbox website, according to data from research firm Slice Intelligence. Birchbox's service even boosted sales at Sephora and Ulta. Even with retailers, they don't see us as a threat. They know that we're doing something for everybody. And Birchbox has even inspired a wave of subscription-based services. BarkBox offers toys and treats for dogs each month. Julep provides nail polishes for a monthly price. And Art Snacks delivers full-sized arts and crafts products. But the e-commerce giant isn't taking its success online for granted and is moving deeper into the retail business, opening up its first brick-and-mortar location in New York City last year, with more on the way. Hundreds of thousands of products come to market every single year, which is a daunting paradigm. And on top of that, it's really hard to discover beauty when you can't touch, try, and feel it. So we realized the internet wasn't going to be able to be the place to discover beauty by itself. So we started with a subscription plus content plus e-commerce. And what we realized is that our consumer is responding so much to Birchbox as a way to discover that we can't just be in one channel. We have to be there for her everywhere, which means online and offline. So this is our first test. Though the company still has a long way to go on the retail side, Sephora boasts some 2,000 locations worldwide. We're testing different brands all the time and just really seeing what works better in a brick and mortar environment versus online. We're seeing a lot of overlap, but really interesting data too. Birchbox is also sitting on a treasure trove of data about which products consumers like and which ones they don't like. Upon subscribing, users tell Birchbox everything from their hair color to skin type. You come in, you tell us a little bit about yourself, and that's going to impact your samples that you get. Then as you shop with Birchbox and you rate products, it continues to augment your experience both offline with the boxes as well as online. Going forward, Beecham says the company has no plans to go public, though reports suggest Birchbox was worth some $500 million last year. Is that too much pressure to have to answer to Wall Street constantly? I really don't think about going public as being the pressure at all, and I actually just think it's misguided to think that going public is the goalpost. From my perspective, there's a huge responsibility to being a public company, and it isn't just the activity of an IPO, it's actually running the public company day to day in a way that the market really understands and can appreciate so that you as a public company can still pursue your strategy, can still pursue innovation and disruption, and that's, you know, when I think about what would be important to me, what I consider important.